Hi everyone, it's Kathleen. I am here today for a short video to let those of you who are following along in my journey of these Alfred blocks, I'm calling them Alfred's Garden Cro uh, Stitch Along. I have purchased this Alfred pattern by Forage by Lisa Mattock, and I've used her patterns for the birds and I've done all of my birds and I'm doing all 20 blocks to create a lap blanket for myself. My birds look different than hers, of course, because mine, my background is wool. My birds are wool and I've made all my, all my blocks, they flow together because all of the bird bodies are the light blue the bird, all of the bird wings are a mustard and all the bird tails are this tan colored and it's all of wool. I've stitched, hand stitched some vintage laces on here, a little bit different on every block. And I've done a similar running stitch with hexagons on every block for the background. So I wanted to use this full foolproof flower embroidery book and do some stitching on these blocks to uh, replicating some of these items I but what I want to do on this today's video I couldn't find a, an example of I've seen it on on Pinterest I live in Canada we have lots of spruce trees and this is my second chance at this video because my camera fell my iPhone fell right off my stand, so I, I already draw, I drew this once. That's my bird. Very vaguely, it looks like my bird, right here. And I want all my birds to be standing on an evergreen tree of some kind. Just, just a branch, just a branch of a tree. And then I'm going to have other flowers and things and stuff in the background. Yes, it might be abstract, but that's just what I want to create. This is a stitch sampler for me. So all of my birds will be standing on a branch and the branches that um, Jennifer has in her book, they don't resemble the, I call them Christmas trees here, uh, these evergreen trees. And we have so many different kinds in Canada and I, I'm gonna demonstrate the branches maybe uh, in different videos or did the greenery portions. Today I'm just going to be doing a branch, one branch. And the way that I lay my stitches, I drew them before, now I might have to draw, draw them again. I'm just going to be doing this brown portion for today on one of these blocks and then I'll go off camera and I'll do the brown portion on all 20 of mine. In Canada, we have, again, different different types of conif um, I say coniferous, I don't even know if that's a Christmas tree or not. Different kinds of, of Christmas trees here, evergreens, that stay green all year round. And sometimes there's a, a, a branch that sticks out and they just have green, 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 green. Lo very long green branches like what I've drawn. Other times they just have green, 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 green sticking out like this. Other times they have a branch and then maybe some greens sticking out like this. So I'm gonna do different pores, different kinds here on my, on my, um, on my block. So what I've drawn there is, it's nice to have a branch. And when you start, I said on my other video that I had to delete, the thinnest part of your branch that I'm going to do, this is just of many classes that I've taken about about a lot of different things, different artistic things. So your focal point, if your bird is looking one way, your big focal point should be behind the bird, this way. If it's in here, it's supposedly wrong. Right or wrong, I'm going to follow that rule and I'm going to put my my big grouping in the back. So that for me, that means my branch will start at the beak in the front on the side with the beak and get thicker towards the tail. 
So if this guy was a different one, so my beak is on this side, so my thinnest part of the branch will be here and it goes thicker towards the tail. And when we lay down these stitches, it is, they are uh, straight stitches, but then they go, they go like this. I've done them in previous stitching videos that I've done. And then when the branch gets thicker, we're gonna have to maybe do stitches like this. And so, but we're gonna continue with the straight stitches like this until we build up that thick branch of that evergreen tree. And that's, to me, this is exactly what we have here where I live. So that's what I'm going to do on here. And the, if you hear this kind of strange noise in the background, Jacques is eating his dentabone to clean his teeth, to brush his teeth, and that's the best thing in the planet for him, so. <laughs> He's going, mmm, mm, yummy, yum, yum. Okay, so this, I'm using this brown yarn. Oh, for the love of God, Jock. I'm using yarn. Geez, he's so distracting. I only chose this yarn because it's a variegated brown. Because here in Canada, that's what our, our greenery, our, our trees or the branches, or the wood part is like. So that's why I chose this color. This one happens to me, I bought it in Edmonton, in a yarn store that we have here, and it's Homestead Painted Yarn. It happens to be 80% wool, 20% hemp. Do I care about that? No. Do I like the price? No, but I bought it because of the color, and hopefully it'll last me a long time. So, none of Lisa's birds have branches. That's okay. I'm making my own exploration. And when I bought this, I thought they would tell us what stitches to use. I look at this and they're pictures, but they're not stitches. So I guess I'm making my own stitches. So block one, I'm going to work just like she says here, block one. And I'm going to, I did that, that bird with the two wings that bird with the two wings so that's what this is i'm starting with block one i can put away jennifer's book because it's not helping me in this case and i will thread up this what kind of needle am i using i have no idea i can't tell you if it's a chenille needle or what it just has a very large eye and i'm very lucky with large eye needles like this it could be a chenille needle i take my fuzzy yarn wrap it around the eye of the needle, squeeze it with my fingers. I have very thin fingernails, so I can squeeze it into that big eye and pull. So I'm very lucky, I don't need a, uh, a needle threader. Okay, so I'm gonna start here, and if I wanna start at my beak. So I want my branch to somehow go like this and it'll go in the middle of the feet. So I'm gonna start somewhere around here. And because I work in wool, I can go, I can go, I can grab about half an inch of fabric and I'm just grabbing the top loops. You don't see anything on the front. I'm grabbing the back loops and I love working in wool for this reason. I never knot my thread. I just take a large half an inch bite, grab the last two threads and take a small bite. And that ties it up. It's, it's tight now. I can start stitching. And look, you can't see where I started. So I wanna start here. I'm gonna come out through the front. Now where am I on camera? Okay, I'm going to come out on the front. And is that too low? Well, let's just see if I can. I got to anchor my knuckle so I don't move around. So let's anchor my knuckle right here. Can you see? Yes. So I'm going to be doing straight stitches. And I can do about a quarter of an inch stitch 
So there, that's actually quite large. So there is one stitch and I'm going to come up maybe halfway. I'm on the top of the stitch halfway and I'm going to still go on this line. So that stitch is about a quarter of an inch. So maybe I'm going to go like that. I'm going to come up, I want to stagger it. Maybe this one I still will go half. I'm underneath that stitch now. Oops, let's go further up. I mean further to the left. So I'm, st I'm still halfway. That's the whole sti first stitch. I'm underneath and I am... I want to go quite close to uh, that yarn and I'm my little bites are going to be the same that one eighth of an inch all the way down now and I'm going to try to follow a straight line. Now I'm going to go on the top touching that yarn And I'm going to go an eighth of an inch and I'm making the line so it goes in between those feet. I'm going to go underneath this one. I think I can take a little bit longer stitches because that looks like it's a little bit narrow. So in my, if my line is going like this, instead instead of an eighth of an inch, I might go just a hair longer. And I alternate from top to bottom. So now I'm on the top and I go halfway. I'm gonna take a longer stitch yet from this line I'm going to go out and I'm going to go on this bottom stitch here this is the bottom stitch I'm going to go halfway see they caught my fishing line here okay and pull that and I'm aiming for the middle of my feet here. So I'm gonna go a little bit longer. And let's go halfway between this top. Because that top stitch is there. I'm, my needle's coming up above and I am coming out halfway between, halfway in the stitch above it. Look at my feet, go down. Ouch. If I didn't have the camera, I'd just be pulling and it would go faster. So let's take the bottom. You see how long this stitch is? So let's go half, real close. And feet this is the center of my feet there but I want to go down in a straight line this is my next stitch that's the stitch above so I'm going to come up there okay I can cover up some of this. I still have a hole here, so in between these bullions. So I'm gonna go there. And wow, where's this next stitch? It starts here. Ends there, so halfway, and then bring it up underneath. 
it's so nice. And we're gonna go, where's that other one there? We're gonna go right here. Oh, love that. Okay, so where I did the bottom, so our top stitch is there to there, so about here. Okay, and to make it look like that foot is underneath, wrapped around, where is my end here? There, so I wanna go here, so I'm gonna just stick it down. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to thicken up this branch. Uh, so if I go on that side, Nope. How am I going to cover him up? Do I want to go underneath? Oh, I'm going to have to go this way. Okay, let's find that underneath one. It's from here to here. So it's right underneath that black. I feel it with my finger. Okay, and... This little claw I want, it has to be over top of the branch, so the branch has to be underneath it. Does that look all right? I don't know. I'm gonna leave it that way that is and continue. Where's my top? It's quite long. I have to come up about here. Going underneath this black foot. And let's see, that underneath stitch is quite long. I'm going to come up. Whoops, my thumb is not working. Am I underneath? Yes, I am. So, where did I see that? So, I'm going to come up in between. I haven't stitched for so long that I've I was halfway doing these, uh, where's my tail? Oh, knotted feather stitch, I think that's called. I forgot, I was halfway between doing this stitch and I absolutely forgot what I was doing. So from here, it looks like I can do a straight stitch and then I'm going to come back and add these kind of crossovers. So let's go, because my stem, my my um, branch has to be thicker. So let's go here and to be thicker, I'm gonna be, I am going to be doing, let's do a stem stitch. Let's go back here, halfway underneath again. And let's do a stem stitch so I can do it better if I'm just on the, on my mat. So I'm just going to be doing long stem stitches and about, about half an inch each stitch will be just just to give it thickness. Let's just do the stem stitch and I want it to maybe come, let's go up over this circle and straight across there. So let's try that. just over top of that for now and then we'll see where we're going to veer off. So you can mix up stitches. I'm just coloring in the, the um, stem. See how my working thread is underneath? You just keep it to one side, either underneath or on top. That's the difference between the stem, stem stitch and the outline stitch is how you hold your thread. 
Ooh, that's a nice wonky branch. And I see I have some straight stitches coming here and here. So this brown twig should go underneath here is what I want it to do. That actually went a little bit too high. I don't like that I went too high there. So let's take that out. Rethread. And keep it going a little bit lower. Filling in the branch, this, and I'm going to have the same type of V's going up here, but I want to add some more stitches there, so let's just anchor him here. Why is it a him? I don't know. And let's start over a little bit. And I'm putting the thread on top so it's nice and snug to the other threads. And I want to see these little circles here, so that's why I'm going above the thread. Oops, thread has to be above. Working thread above what I'm doing. a little lump in my lace. Oh good, it's covering it. So I'm going to go to maybe about here. A couple more stitches. And I'm going close to the branch that I, the existing, oh I was underneath. My thread should have been over top so let's move our, there so the thread is working thread is up and over. I made a mistake holding that. And up and over, still go one more. Let's turn it around and have a look. Oh, I like that. I'm going to go down a couple more stitches and then I'll finish off. One. Let's finish off right there. Okay, so that's the inside thickness of the branch. I'm going to continue to make my evergreen type texture after I take a, a two, two fiber bite and then a half inch fiber bite. And take that off. These beautiful scissors Lisa gave me. Oh my god. Okay, look at how nice that is. Let's reload. Uh, hmm. oh, good lord. Good lord, good lord. Over top. Okay, I, I didn't want to have to take that off, but I guess I have to. Okay, why can't I find, why can't I find the end? Oh, there it is. Okay, so I always take from the top of one shoulder to the anchors of the other hand. Okay, so. And where is this? This is. This is the browner side, so I'll have near that near the my work and have the tanner color up here. 
Okay, so where do I, I want to continue. It has to continue there, so that's where I'm going to start. So I come in at a good half inch. <laughs> Way to go, and pull it out. Okay, so half an inch, and two little fibers. I'm holding my tail so I don't pull it out. And tight, and now, where am I? start I'm going to come up here is that halfway uh, right there is halfway top and I'm going to have nice nice long half inch stitches and come up here let's see this is the bottom stitch and it's small so let's come up got to push these threads up and come up under that we don't have to push them up let's just come up here so I'm underneath I'm getting a long st stitch let's go halfway on the top go down oh, this one seems to go down there so we will go down in here let's just wait let's see down further I have to go down to fill it in work with what you have because I think I twisted my threads going up and halfway up let's go here and let's take a nice large stitch and halfway I don't like where that is, so I'm just going to go down and go back. I don't want the stitch to start there because it's too thick. My branch is too thick there. And I have to go on top. I'm going to actually start in this hole up here. Well, I have to. I have to start in that hole there. Come up there and... Oh good, I can go behind this stitch. Still half an inch. And let's go halfway. This way. Take a nice long bite. So by having a, a similar branch that every bird is sitting on in for all of the 20 blocks, it'll be nice and uniform. Not uniform, nice, it, it'll be cohesive, coherent, coherent, cohesive, cohesive. It'll blend together. Okay, oh, I like that one. Let's make him a nice long one. So 
it's just adding more stitches. This one I didn't go halfway. I went right at the end of it because he's really thick already. There, he's got a kind of a lump there growing. Excess lump in his growing season. And there. Now bottom. I'm going to go halfway. behind that other stitch. It's a nice branch. Nice thick branch and this this yarn looks like uh, twine actually. And let's see where is this guy gonna go. Just over here. And halfway. A little less than halfway. way half not it's less than halfway and back less than halfway and back so for the rest of these blocks I'm going to be adding a little branch every every little Every block, all 20 of my blocks will have these branches on them. And I'm going to play with evergreen. Evergreen threads, branches, fluff, <laughs> greenery. Okay. And I'm still going to have Jennifer's little flowers in the, all over the background. And let's go to the end here. Let's do a top one. Nope. Let's start over here. And down to the end. I want one more on the bottom. Right there. And to the end. Okay, I'm done. I love the way that turned out. That's my branch. Just feeling all the different textures here are so pretty. So this is it. So I finish this off by taking a little two thread bite. And then just through the top layers so you do not see it on the other side and I can cut that off. So I'm going to be doing all of the other blocks just like that and hopefully the yarn will change. I'll have some of the darker shades of brown as we go more lighter and more darker after I sew for a while. So that way it, it'll go, the variegation will go from block one to all the way through block 20. My stranded browns will change throughout. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you back for in the next video for some greenery. Thank you everyone for watching. Bye for now.